Hi everybody, it's Tamara from Etc. Eyes, and I have a book haul for you today. Um, I went to a used book sale yesterday, and I picked up all kinds of treasures. Um, this sale happens twice a year in my community, and all of the money goes towards um, a scholarship for young women to go to university. So it's all for a good cause, and... Um, I used to always go and find like great books to read, but now as a junk journaler, there's like a treasure trove of um, all kinds of stuff there because it's mostly very old books, of course. Um, so I thought I would share today what what I picked up. Um, so there's a little bit of everything here. So um, we'll just start with um, this one. This is something to read. Uh, Colleen McCullough, Caesar's Women. Uh, I just I really love um, historical fiction, and I love ancient Rome, so this looks like a nice, big, thick, um, good beach read, maybe, <laughs> although I will need my glasses for this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that one's just for reading. And then I picked up a couple of um, crochet books. Um, I used to crochet a long time ago, and I gave it up, so I'm going to have to sort of, I, I really want to reteach myself how to do it. Um, and I love all the um, great patterns from the 70s, and I love the, of course, anything with granny squares. What I thought was really funny with this book is uh, it's by Jackie Shapiro and her mother. <laughs> her poor mother doesn't even get a byline on this. Um, anyway, there's lots of um, really great projects in here, and of course there's a whole how to, which is great because I need to, like I said, I need to reteach myself some great granny square projects. So, anyways, that'll be fun to to um, go through. And then this is also this is a McCall's crochet treasury, and um, this has just really, really awesome projects. Um, I can't wait to dive into this one. Um, there's some of my favorites. That'll be too hard for me, but um, there's some granny square halter tops. Those are cute. Not for me to wear, but maybe somebody else. I love this this one here. Um, yeah, there's just all kinds of really great um, projects that some are easier, some are harder. And this one, whoops, sorry. Um, this was the one that made me absolutely pick it up because I think this picture was one of the very first pins that I put up on my Pinterest board way back when, whenever Pinterest first started. So that was the clincher for me. So wish me luck on my crochet journey. <laughs> um, we'll go to these three, I guess, here. They just happen to be all in the same sort of color family, purely by coincidence. Um, these are books that I will gut and make into journals. I just thought this was a nice size. It would be great in a purse, so that'll be nice. And then I love this size for a journal. It's just nice and handy, and you can get lots of signatures in there. And then this one, also a great size, but um, also just look at the, the cover. That I think I'm going to keep... Um, I'll maybe put some crochet lace on the outside or something, but it's just, it's really pretty. And then inside has a great map as well. So I think this is going to become my next travel journal, probably. Um, so yeah, so that'll be fun to take apart and make. And then uh, we've got uh, three other batches here. I picked um, this up, Cross Stitch Patterns in Color. And uh, this was another hobby that I gave up a long time ago. I used to cross stitch, um, but I didn't buy it for the well, I bought it for the cross stitch patterns, but not to make. Um, once you get into it, look at these. I think these will be really fun to put into a junk journal. Even you know the black and white patterns great as well, but look at the color ones. Um, so great. Sorry, I'm working it around my tripod need to find a new way of doing this so that I don't keep bumping it um, as I bump it. <laughs> so there's wildflowers and then there's um, scenes with people in them. Those are really cute. And then 
there are the end here. Yeah, house plants. So those will be fun. I think I can make them into pockets or flips or um, little mini envelopes. I don't know, tags. I think that'll be really fun to incorporate. And then in the same sort of vein, uh, English countryside needlepoint, uh, which is slightly different than cross stitch. And I just know there's going to be a needlepoint person out there who is um, going to cringe when I say this, but uh, I'm um, really looking forward to cutting this book up um, because we have a mixture of images here. We've got sort of full-size page images of, I think it's supposed to be like, here's what life was like when people did needlepoint or when these designs were created or something like that. So there's some really great images, and it's not super glossy paper, so that'll be neat. And then you learn a little about cross stitch, and then you get to the patterns coming up here. Here we go. Full page in color patterns, along with a border as well. So, um, and they're I just think they're so pretty, uh, and they're gonna look great in a junk journal. Look at that. And then there's some really great ones at the back here that are sort of all over patterns. Love these too. I think there's one in here of a bird. Oh, there it is. That I think is gorgeous. So those will start making appearances in my next junk journals for sure. And then uh, I got some sort of art history type books and um, that's another one of my uh, past passions was art history. I used to um, study art history in university so I have my own set of books that um, I probably won't cut up <laughs> but this one is a little bit different um, and I, I don't think I'll feel too bad cutting it up because I'll show you. Um, these are these are images from uh, Leonardo da Vinci's work, but it, they're like close-up sections of his paintings and drawings, and so I won't feel like I'm like cutting into something um, that I shouldn't be. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's some good examples, and and of course it's all beautiful, so they'll make gorgeous tags and um, these would be great for envelopes I guess I don't know see there's a good this is an image everybody knows so this is a good example um, the Mona Lisa so this is just sort of a section of the painting so uh, if I cut it um, it's okay so all kinds of, and I think I will uh, most likely read this book first before I cut into it because it looks like it's really informative and interesting. So um, yeah, so that's a great one. And then um, this is sort of a, along the same lines, um, images from Renaissance Florence, and this is um, wedding chest images. This is a really great book. And I think normally in the past this is something I would have passed out. I would have walked away from it because it's a little bit glossy. But these are great full page images. Um, and I think I can make them into something really cool for my junk journals. Um, so there's one of the wedding chests. And But what I really love in this book is that it's sort of... Because wedding chests are... Um, well, it's like sort of long and narrow, you get images that are long and narrow. So these will be great for even for bookmarks, um, for flips on the side of long pages. Um, yeah, so many beautiful images in here, of course. Um, let's see here. And there's some of the chests as well. I don't know how I'll use those, but <laughs> or if I'll be able to. But here's a great one. This is one of my favorite ones. Look at that. Yeah, so you get the idea. So, um, so that's just a little tip. Don't be afraid to, you know, look at something that doesn't have that vintage vibe. And uh, you might find a way to use it. 
so these this last set of books, these are all sort of the wilderness, bot botanical, nature type books that I picked up. And this one I almost, again, I almost walked away from this one uh, because it's quite glossy, but um, it's got some of these images on the sides of pages where I could go in and fussy cut and, and get some great stuff. Um, and then along with that, there's just beautiful nature photography in here. Just gorgeous. Um, and I think I'll be able to use these. I, I do have some ideas coming up for some sort of nature camping type fishing type of um, journals for some people I know who are into that kind of thing. So I think these images will come in very handy. So, so that. And next we have The Literary Gardener. And um, this is fun because it has great images. Now these are also a little glossy, but they're really pretty um, garden, foliage, flowers, that type of thing. And then um, on the other page it has like an excerpt from a book or a quote or um, something like that. So um, both sides are great to include. So I thought that might be um, a good addition to my junk journals. And then I saved the two best for last. <laughs> um, wildflowers. And I mean, just the cover alone tells you, you got to pick that up. So, <laughs> um, and this is really interesting because once you really get into the book, uh, where do we go here? It's this format. So the whole, it's just page after page of this where you have a great image um, and then information below about it. And it's all in these long skinny um, boxes. So I figure I can, you know, I can fussy cut. I can get an image if I want. I can just cut out the box. And again, you've got a great bookmark or a flip on a side of a page or something like that, or a tag or who knows. So, um, and this is also just a really good book for me to, <laughs> to read through for, um, for, uh, getting to know what's in my garden as well before I do any cutting. So, um, just like I said, page after page of great images. So I'm really happy with with that purchase. And then um, this one caught my eye because it just looks old, right? And then at the bottom, it says 1868, and I thought, oh, I have to grab that before somebody else does. <laughs> uh, paintings uh, painted and lithographed by Agnes Fitzgibbon, Canadian wildflowers. Um, so this is not, obviously, from 1868. <laughs> this was actually published in 1972. It's still a really awesome book. Whoops. It's in a box, first of all. And then when you get into it, the paper is just gorgeous. It's really thick and super flat. And uh, even the text areas, nice big text in it. But the it's full page botanical images. I mean, these are so beautiful. I would probably just put these in a frame and put them up on my wall. They're so great. Um, but, you know, some of them will end up in a junk journal. If I can, if I can get the nerve to cut this book up. I don't know. I Sometimes I get books with every intention of cutting them up and then I just, oh, they're so pretty. Look at this one. I love that one. So, uh, so I think that'll be really great. I love this one. Um, yeah, so that was my, my score for yesterday. Um, I thought I made out really well. So, so I hope that gives you some, um, good ideas for the next time you go to the thrift store or go to a secondhand book sale or something like that. So keep your, um, mind open and your eyes wide open and you never know what you'll come across. So thanks everybody for watching. Um, this is part one. There will be a part two coming up that I'm going to show you sort of all the books that I normally pull from 
along with some of those books that I uh, just haven't had the nerve to cut up yet because they're just so pretty. Um, so that'll be coming soon. So make sure to uh, like and hit subscribe and leave a comment if you like. Um, and I hope to see you back soon. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.